Hello everybody, it's Brittany at Big Cat Rescue here in Tampa, Florida. And I'd like to share a home tour with you today. And this is for our female caracal. Her name is Chaos. And Chaos actually just moved alongside Cyrus. We'll get a better view of her. She is right there on her platform, her giant platform. If you follow us regularly, you know that Jinx, our black leopard, recently lived here. And then he got a huge upgrade to a new enclosure. And so we brought the caracals, Cyrus and Chaos. They had been housed together at a cattery to fuel the illegal pet trade. But when they came here, we quickly realized they did not want to share space. So we always keep them near each other, but they are not in the same enclosure. Neither of them enjoy going to transport cages. So neither of them, in their few years of being here, have ever been able to go to our 22,000 square foot funcation enclosure. And now it is directly across the street from both Cyrus and Chaos. And so all we have to do in the future when it's their turn is drop this area of wire that you see on both sides. It creates a ceiling and a floor and walls. We hook it all together, we lock it up, and then she is gonna be able to walk herself right across the street and have a two week vacation where she just gets a giant space all to herself, all new smells, all new territory to mark, which that's what wildcats like to do. So we're very excited for her. So she just moved in, she's still adjusting, but I'm gonna walk all the way around her enclosure. This is kind of where it starts. So she has this really cool tree on the ground that she can hide under or walk along or lay on top, plus a natural tree growing right in the center there. Obviously has a couple of toys in which she has played with them because they're not where they were when we put her in here. And then she has that massive platform. We'll see that from a couple different angles. This is her safety entrance for these two sections. We design our enclosures in a bubble system where each bubble is roughly 12 to 1800 square feet. And these safety gates create a double door system. So there's always two locked doors between the cat and the outside world. So if we need to go in, say she's over there and we really need to get into this bubble to fix something or pull something out, all we have to do is close and lock um, one of these guillotine doors and then we can safely go in through the safety entrance and go into this side, do what we need to do, come out, relock everything, good to go. So all of her clips go here on the safety entrance so that our hands are never right next to the cat when we're opening and closing doors. So she has this section that has quite a few natural trees growing in them. And then she has this huge concrete den over here that we'll walk by with another big log and another big natural tree. She has a feeding lockout area. She mainly just uses this area for water. She knows she can always come here for fresh water. There's a ceramic tile on top that ensures that none of the debris from all the trees um, we'll fall in it to the best of our ability. Can't promise that during a windstorm, but that's why we come out and we feed every morning. Our cleaners walk around the enclosure every day and they clean their feeding lockouts and give them fresh water. And then shortly thereafter, a double checker comes around and also makes sure that the water still looks good and everything's in top shape. Here's another view back towards her. She's a very big, wide open, lots of trees. There's a cameo of Mr. Cyrus out wandering around. Cyrus is her neighbor, so again, they don't have a shared wall, but they are right next to each other. Occasionally you'll see them lay sort of in the same area, but we tried it when they first arrived. We made sure they were spayed and neutered, put them back together, and they wanted nothing to do with each other. So the top of her den, she can get up there and lay, or there's two doorways. There's a doorway on either side. These large concrete dens are amazing because they do help keep them 
warmer in our Florida winter and cooler <laughs> in our excruciating Florida summers. So we're just gonna twist and wind back here. We'll be coming up alongside of her any minute now. Hi, lady. So this is another view of the two doorways that lead her over and then her giant platform here. Now her platform has an amazing ramp. Hi. This is Miss Chaos Caracal. Hi, sweetness. That is a very typical serval or caracal greeting. Are you liking your new enclosure? I think so. I do, I think they like it. Every morning she gets on the very top and she was doing that in her old enclosure too. So we knew she liked being up really high, but she's getting up there in age. She's in her teens. And the last thing that we would want is for her to have to jump and then jump down. So she has a really big ramp that has nice little grippy steps on it for her. Another big open space back here. Another view of her. Ooh. There we go. And she looks so tiny on such a huge platform, and she's actually quite a large cat. Caracals are definitely on, in the medium sized cat world, and they've got big cat attitudes. So she's got quite a few toys. She's another one that doesn't super enjoy a lot of toys, you don't really see them play. A lot with the enrichment but she's very smart with operant conditioning and really loves getting sickles which are like popsicles that we make and she really enjoys just getting snacks and things she can munch on so here's another view of this really cool tree stump that's in here and her view to her vacation area you guys remember jinx flat catting behind this so this is another one of those double door tunnel systems. So again, if we need to get into this section, we would have to shift her out of it and drop these doors, lock them closed, and then we could go in and do whatever we need. We don't ever allow our cats to have shared walls um, because there's definitely a proven history at a lot of facilities where the big cats can get a hold of each other's tails or feet or faces or legs and they can actually take off each other's tails, ears, <laughs> legs, and really harm if not kill each other. So we don't allow our cats to have shared walls and we don't force them to share space with each other. So here's her again in that back bubble and then she can walk over and she's got all of this space here. This is the feeding lockout that she's been using. So it has that layer of chicken wire on it to help keep vultures and other large birds from trying to get to her or her food in the morning. The keepers are always nearby as well. That pole attaches to the wire that holds up her lockout door. Again, another water bowl, her food plate. This is actually a safe, happy place. The cats don't mind at all coming over to this kind of extended box that we call a feeding lockout. She's got some foliage where she can hide and wait for the feeders to arrive and then come jumping out. She's got this tree stump den up here. You'll see that we have um, hoses sporadically placed throughout the property where every single lockout has a hose that can reach it. Our cages also have, you'll see like the PVC pipes. We also have a sprinkler system. And in the winter, we will put tons of straw or hay in all of these types of dens just to ensure that they have um, as many comfy, warm places as they could want. A lot of the cats drag it all back out and play in it instead, but we still offer it to them. <laughs> and you'll see that like all of the small cats, she has a roof on the top of her enclosure. This is the other side of her safety entrance that I described earlier. 
And then we are right back to the beginning, just on the opposite side of the tunnel to our vacation rotation area for our small cats. We call it Funcation, so we're looking forward to the first time that she gets to just walk across the street and experience it for the first time. And it's all thanks to you guys. So if you ever have more questions about our enclosures here at Big Cat Rescue, visit bigcatrescue.org slash cages.